Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 30 Night Raid A man wearing a white robe embroidered with dark dragons left a tent meant for the Jiang people's royalty. With a flick of a wrist, the folded fan in his hand unfurled, and he fanned himself with it. He seemed like an unrestrained and excellent young master of the current age. He looked to be in his twenties, and with one glance, it seemed he was of Han descent. In this capital city of the Jiang people, where the royalty lived, he seemed thinner, weaker and frailier than the Jiang people around. But on his face was a calm and lofty smile. As if he were ignoring how the Jiang people were staring at him, like a tiger eyeing its prey. His attendant smiled lightly. Your Highness has taken a huge benefit from the Jiang people. Your Highness should not keep up such an expression, lest they grow furious. Oh my, over there in that direction. Princess Changping is playing the gookin again, said the man, closing his eyes. From his brows, it was evident that he was enjoying the music. Let's go visit the princess. This man was the guest of Princess Changping, Li Yao. However, each time he came, he only sat outside to listen quietly to the gookin. He rarely bothered her with conversation. Yet this time, as the man had just sat down, he heard the voice of a woman from inside. King Cheng, you're here. The man rose to his feet and folded his fan. With a smile, he met his palm with his fist and said, Hopefully I did not disturb your playing of the gookin. The fingers of the woman inside the room strayed across the strings. She slowly said, King Cheng's skill in the gookin is deep and immense. As such, this Changping does not continue playing out of embarrassment. The man smiled. The princess is too modest. Once I heard the sound of your gookin, I cannot forget it. After more than twenty years in this world, I have not found a single person that can compare to you. Beyond the curtain concealing the doorway rang a song, Goose Falling from the Sky to Pingxia. The man sat down again. Closed his eyes to listen. He felt as if before his eyes had suddenly appeared vast dunes of yellow sand, wild geese circling the sky in search for something. At that moment, a period of sad cries. Then the heavy whines ceased. The sound of the gookin seemed far away. The wild geese had left for the south, all around was white. After the song ended, the man let out a long sigh. Only after a long while did he manage to calm his heart. The woman in the room appeared like she had before, playing the gookin casually with no motive or song in mind. A moment later, she said, Wang Er, come pour some tea for His Highness. In the northwest region, tea leaves were more valuable than gold. Even though he was the king of a country and had many treasures, these tea leaves that he loved so much were so rare in his country. However, Li Yao's dowry contained many crates of various tea leaves. After many years, the scent and taste were still fresh. The two sat separately, taking in the fragrant scent and taste. Not a word left their lips. After finishing one cup of tea, the man rose to his feet. Many thanks to the princess for the generous hospitality. I don't have anything valuable on me. The only thing I can give you is this piece of news as a reciprocatory gift. He paused. After he heard the sound of the gookin cease from inside the room, he smiled. Your second brother, His Highness Prince Chun, is currently at Yushu Pass. Then he stood again. He stared at the curtain that was blocking his view from the inside, toward the beautiful silhouette behind it. I'll take my leave. Beyond the curtain, Li Yao's expression remained neutral. Wang Er knelt by her side, a smile of surprise and joy on her face. Princess, did your honored self hear that? The second imperial prince is coming to take your honored self back home. Li Yao smiled slightly. She stroked the hair of her personal attendant. Yet she did not speak. Ever since she had left the capital, she did not carry the thought of returning. She had been the great state of Kang's royal princess and married off in a political marriage far away. Now, her identity was the secondary consort of a foreigner, so if she returned, it would cause her father and brothers much embarrassment. Even if her second brother came to take her back, she could not come with him. 
Wang Er parted the curtain to look outside. What remained of that man was only his back figure. Wang Er said, it's really hard to believe that that Zenyuan country has only been around for 40 years. That king actually has the temperament of a noble young master, even more so than those of our capital. Li Yao followed Wang Er to look in that direction. After a while, she slowly said, indeed, his demeanor is that of centuries worth of accumulation. Centuries. Wang Er was shocked. Li Yao lowered her head, running a hand across the strings of her gukan, feeling them out. He is the first king of Zenyuan country. When it comes to age, his is close to that of the former dynasty's crown prince, Rui Wen. Look, he has never minded people knowing his surname as Cheng. Wang Er said, what should we do? Princess, if the king of Zenyuan country is in fact someone from the prior dynasty, they must have many spies in the central plains. If the second imperial prince meets trouble, what should we do? Li Yao looked outside. The area surrounding where she lived was under watch by many Qiang guards. Of the people who came with her as part of her dowry, only Wang Er remained. The rest of her maidservants were either given by a Gu'er Mu to his generals, or could not endure the harsh and frigid conditions of the Qiang people's territory, perishing by her side. The Qiang people were on guard against her more than they were on guard against tigers and wolves. She was like a bird kept in a cage, so she could not send any information outside. Zenyuan country had fertile land, with an abundance of grain. This time, Cheng Sijia gave a lot of grain to the Qiang people. However, he took in exchange much land at the back half of their territory. For more than a hundred years, the Qiang people had tried to take the central plains. They lived by raising cows and sheep and hunting game. They truly hoped to move south, where it was warmer and richer. Cheng Sijia used his skill in speaking and wit to convince a Gu'er Mu that the defense of Yushu Pass was weak, and that it would not take long for him to enter the central plains. Then the land at the back half of the Qiang people's territory, which was not fertile, would be given to the Zenyuan country. After Cheng Sijia gave this message to a Gu'er Mu, a Gu'er Mu quickly sent a message to his second son who was outside Yushu Pass, Bo Tu K, to attack on that same day. To let that weak emperor, who sent a new general and prince to the border, see just how vulnerable they were in front of his own army. Compared to him, his eldest son Buahgur was calm and introverted. Aguer Mu preferred his second son, who resembled him in being fierce and decisive. He felt that if he himself were able to take the central plains, his second son would be the one who gave the most effort. At the very least, the Zenyuan country would wait until his people broke through to the central plains. If the people from Zenyuan country hold up in the northwest well behavedly, then he'd leave them alone. But if they had a change of heart, he would take back the entirety of the northwest region. At night, Li Chen immediately roused at the sound of the horn. With quick hands he donned his body armor, grabbing his saber that was leaning on the wall next to the entrance. Qi Yunruo sat up and immediately asked, Is the enemy launching a surprise attack? Li Chen nodded. He quickly pushed the door open and went outside. His footsteps stalled. He looked back and said, wait here obediently. Don't come out. Qi Yunruo nodded. Then Li Chen disappeared into the night. Li Chen carried his saber into the leading general's barrack. Zhao Weidu and Si Da wore grave expressions, and Si Da watched Li Chen for a while. Li Chen nodded at him and asked. How many people are in the raid? Zhao Weidu gestured for a subordinate to report. A Douwei said at least 500. No more than 1,000. Of these past few months with the Qiang people raiding us at night, this is the most people they have brought. Zhao Weidu and Li Chen shared a look. They understood the implications at once. Their large army had just arrived, and this was the Qiang people's warning, an initial display of strength. Zhao Weidu shifted his gaze to Si De. Voice cold enough to freeze, he said. Why is it that no matter how we defend against their spies, their spies still slip through? Sita said, if this humble general could do something about it, 
this humble general would not have let the Qiang people almost break through into Yushu Pass, requiring the court to send more troops. It's all due to Zinyuan country. Many people from the border who left Yushu Pass settled down in the outside. But their relatives stayed in Yushu Pass. Even if we investigate each of them, we can't be sure of all their ties. General, there's merely 1,000 people. This humble general is willing to lead 800 men to clash with them and exterminate them all. Zhao Weidu uttered not a word. But Li Chen looked at the person who had just spoken. He was young with a sharp gaze. Compared to the older and more experienced generals, he seemed thin-skinned. Li Chen slightly drew his brows together. He recognized him. Since they're here to give this general an initial display of strength, this general wants to show them our might. Fu Weisu, bring 2,000 men with you as backup. Shang Guanling. This humble general is present. Lead 1,000 men out to clash with the raiders. This humble general will comply. Quickly choose your men, shouted Zhao Weidu. Once you have won your battles and return, this general will arrange a celebration for you. Yes, said Shang Guanling and Su Yuan at the same time. Thinking he was only there for support, Su Yuan did not feel unsatisfied. He had never entered the battlefield before. The merit he received in the western mountain camp was not from actual battle but from leading troops. He did not have much confidence in winning against the Qiang people in a fight. However, he also knew that for the first battle occurring under Zhao Weidu's watch, Zhao Weidu would not let him fight in the front lines. Shang Guanling was an experienced general. In the past, he had guarded another pass, and accumulated much military merit. Zhao Weidu trusted him but he was not familiar with Shang Guanling as a deputy general. After Shang Guanling had left, he seemed to be calm as he sat in wait, but his heart was a different story. Li Chen put on the dark body armor of a commander of a thousand. Compared to the rest of the generals, his imposing manner was not the slightest bit less. Everyone was clear on what identity he possessed. Yet they did not mention it out loud. Ever since Li Chen received a few thousand of the soldiers who had lost the prior battle, he rose from a commander of a hundred to a commander of a thousand. Two days in a row, he trained his new men. As the water rose, so would the ship at its surface. Chu Qing and other lower-ranked soldiers became the new commander of a hundreds. Zhou Linyan and Zhou Shanye, this uncle and nephew pair, also became in charge of a hundred men each. Li Chen and Zhou Nian weren't close. That's why he also wasn't close to Zhou Linjian, who was in the same generation as him, and Zhou Shanye, who was in the younger generation. However, his imperial mother had sent them to help him. Li Chen could not send these two people away. So, he gave them important jobs while also keeping watch on them. The Zhou family and Yuan family were renowned and large families without military power. These past few years, they nurtured many outstanding men and sent them to the barracks to train. Li Chen sighed in his heart, brows furrowing. On the third watch, the first messenger rushed in breathing heavily. Report, this time. Bo Tu K's subordinate general, Nu Bai Ha, has personally led his men to launch a surprise attack. The hearts of Zhao Weidu and Li Chen trembled at once. Nu Bai Ha was one of Bo Tu K's valiant generals. He and Bo Tu K's mother, Ai Isuo, were from Western Owl tribe, and he was one of its most talented warriors. At the same time, he was cruel and tyrannical, with the habit of surrounding his enemies to kill them. In the border, just the sound of his name was enough to scare crying children in the night from their tears. Bo Tu K indeed wanted to show off their strength, sending his most capable men. Zhao Weidu rose to his feet. He anxiously paced the room. Gritting his teeth, he said, help this general block them. Don't let them take one step into the pass. Report, Nu Bai Ha brought his men known as the Twelve Western Owl Yakshas. Just these twelve people would need more than a hundred people to stop them. Zhao Weidu's complexion turned green. He looked at Si Di. Si Di nodded and said, General Situ Su died in the hands of Nu Bai Ha's subordinates. 
one of these twelve people. The strength and energy of each of these twelve is enough to lift a large cauldron. As such, one of them can take on a hundred enemies. Sabres and spears cannot pierce them. Rumors have it that even if a thousand people went against them, they still cannot stop them. Report, General Shang Guan is wounded and surrounded. Si De lowered his head, a mocking smile spreading across his face. Zhao Weidou was only capable of this. Already losing at the first battle. Let's see how the court would deal with him. Report, half of the thousand men sent to fight have perished. One of the subordinates muttered, could it be that they really have three heads and six arms? Normal people are not their match. Li Chen took a deep breath. This humble general is willing to lead troops to battle. Zhao Weidu immediately said, rejected. The moment Li Chen's words had left his lips, all around went silent. One thousand men could not fight against their enemies for two hours. Su Yuan was young, and did not seem to have much ability. His Highness was extremely noble. If anything happened to him, they could not bear the responsibility. In fact, His Highness only had a hundred close soldiers, and a few thousand men who had lost the previous battle. Li Chen said in a low voice, This humble general does not believe there are people in the world whom cannot be pierced by saber or spear. Meeting a Buddha, kill a Buddha. Meeting a god, kill a god. It's merely that they have some ability. Not to mention, people have just exaggerated about their might, one telling ten, and ten telling a hundred, eventually crafting this image of them. Furthermore, people are afraid of them because they are the murderers of General Situsu. Could it be that you have all forgotten something? General Situ was tricked to rush out of Yushu Pass, losing his life in an ambush. How could that kind of situation be considered the enemy's successful battle against us? They relied on their famous name to scare our hearts upon hearing it, causing us to retreat in defeat. As long as we have an even more famous name than the Qiang people, once their soldiers see us and grow timid, who would think the soldiers of the great state of Kong are not as good as those of the barbarians? After this speech, everyone went silent. Then Zhao Weidu shouted, If we want a name, this general will personally lead troops to battle. Why must we have your highness directly step in? This general is the leading general his majesty personally sent to the northwest, willing to die with the troops. Li Chen said, General Zhao is the leading general of the northwest. If something were to happen to you, tens of ten thousand people would be without a leader. I am only a commander of a thousand. How could I be more important than you? This time, Li Chen's tone was calm yet made Zhao Weidu's heart tremble. Si De frowned as he looked at him, heart extremely complicated. If Prince Chun encountered trouble, he could not shirk the responsibility. However, that His Highness had said this gave Si De a hope of defeating their enemies. Although he did not like Zhao Weidu, Si De did not want the loss at Yushu Pass in his hands. Zhao Weidu examined Li Chen. But Li Chen only said, since the leading general did not reject this idea, this humble general will muster men. General, please deliver it. Your Highness must think carefully about this. How about this humble general lead troops instead? Zhao Weidu took a deep breath. Approved. Li Chen lifted his long saber, turned around, and left. Qi Yunruo sat in his and Li Chen's quarters with his head lowered. What was on his mind was anyone's guess. As the voices of the soldiers grew loud outside, realization struck him and he rushed to stand, sprinting to the window and opened it. After the horn was blown, Li Chen's subordinates had already donned their armor. Presently, they were lined up neatly as they left. Qi Yunruo did not see Li Chen's figure. He blinked in the night. Yet his previous worry had vanished. His Highness would return safely. He would. Meanwhile, Li Chen stood outside the camp. Quietly watched as thousands of people rapidly assembled. A satisfied smile graced his lips. He shouted, This prince is His Majesty's second son, titled Prince Chun. Now that the country is facing danger, I will not avoid it. 
people will face frustrating times but the will to protect the country cannot be withdrawn. Are you willing to follow this prince to repel the Qiang people, to protect our border? Yes, roared the crowd. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 31 The Western Al Yashas Roars of Prince Chun, long live a thousand years, has arrived reverberated through the surrounding space as Li Chen's men rushed through the gates of Yushu Pass, the coppery scent of blood thick in the air. New Bai Ha could understand the Han Tung and he narrowed his eyes dangerously upon hearing the cries. He yelled, the son of the Han Emperor has come to seek his death. Whoever kills him will be rewarded five kilograms of gold and twenty women. Kill the Han Prince. Wipe out Yushu Pass. Li Chen held his long saber horizontally, gaze cold as ice. Those who had the guts to want his life should not be afraid to lose their own. He raised his saber and shouted, Kill! Screams of kill, rang from behind him, the product of thousands of people. Their leading general had died in these people's hands a few months ago. If they lost a battle again, and the Qiang people slayed their new leading general, Yusha Pass would be finished. And they themselves would truly be branded criminals of the great state of Kong. As the soldiers by Li Chen's side shielded him from attacks, he charged out toward Shang Guanling, who only had a few personal guards with him. His body was soaked in blood, surrounded by three topless Jiang soldiers. The uniforms of these three were different from the rest. A cold smile slid across Li Chen's face. Were these members of the so-called Twelve Western Owl Yakshas? Shang Guanling applied pressure to the wound near his heart. Surprise and happiness was apparent on his face as he gazed at Li Chen from afar. Chu Qing and Guard Fang Gur stuck close to and protected Li Chen. The night was dark, the sole light coming from the moon. Li Chen was not one bit afraid, in his heart, there's only bloodlust. Gentlemen wielded long swords. But the best weapons to use in a battle at the border were sabers and spears. This long saber he currently held was specially prepared to fight at the border. If it was not dyed in the blood of the Qiang people, Li Chen would not return. The three Qiang warriors could tell that Li Chen's status was higher than that of Shang Guanling. They shared a look. And then they charged at him, bent on slaughtering him. Li Chen brandished his long saber with not a hint of hesitation or intent to dodge the assault. Li Chen parried their attack and upon collision, a loud clang resounded through the air. He gripped his saber's handle with both hands, pressing forward. A scream ripped from his throat as he suddenly leaned back, from his saber's point a dangerous glint. In the moment his opponent stood dazed, Li Chen slashed him long on the chest. But this towering and largely built Jiang soldier with a ferocious face did not seem angry. In fact, he smiled. He shouted one phrase from the Qiang tongue. One hand held his scimitar, and the other large hand spread like a fan. It looked like he didn't have to use much strength to cast aside the Han soldiers pouncing at him. Chu Qing and Fang Gur went against one western owl Yaksha each. They were barely holding on. Not only that, they needed to monitor Prince Chun's situation. As the western owl Yaksha battling the prince had pounced on him, their hearts chilled. However, the prince only furrowed his brows deeply, holding his long saber horizontally before his chest to prepare for a parry. He was not afraid nor did he retreat. As soon as the Qiang soldier's scimitar closed in, even Chu Qing who was only watching felt fatigued from the weight of the assault. The prince's back leg slid back one inch. Everyone who witnessed this scene felt their hearts almost leap out of their chests. Yet a cold smile appeared on Li Chen's face. He suddenly withdrew his long saber and cast it toward the sky. The saber rapidly spun in the air and then fell back into Li Chen's grasp. He thrust the saber forward. The Qiang soldier's pupils dilated. Then from his lips came a spray of blood. He could not believe that that blade had pierced into him. As Chu Qing split his attention to Li Chen's battle, his opponent elbowed him in the chest, sending him flying. His chest flared with intense pain. Then the Qiang soldier who had been clashing with Chu Qing no longer paid attention to him. 
he let out a roar, charging toward Li Chen. Li Chen's gaze gleamed frigid to the extreme. Once again he registered another soldier as his target. The normal soldiers by Li Chen's side started to yell, His Highness has slayed a Western Owl Yaksha. His Highness has slayed a Western Owl Yaksha. This statement spread through the night like wildfire. Many soldiers who had already lost morale became alert all of a sudden. Within the open and wide area, they all shouted from the bottom of their lungs, His Highness has completely slaughtered a Western Owl Yaksha. His Highness has completely slaughtered a Western Owl Yaksha. New Bai Ha sat shocked at the back of the battlefield. Previously, the Qiang soldiers had only lost a hundred people. But after fifteen minutes, they were already on the losing side. A Western Owl Yaksha next to New Bai Ha had a hideous visage. As if he could not believe the weak Han soldiers had killed his brethren. However, reality was right before their eyes. He turned to New Bai Ha and said, General, allow me to bring a few brothers to slaughter those Han soldiers who are sprouting bullshit. Then we'll capture the Han prince, and sacrifice him to the gods for good luck. New Bai Ha's expression was dark. In reality, the Western Owl tribe had become more important than the other tribes due to the second prince, their status increasing continuously. It seemed that it would soon be more important than the tribe of the leader's main consort Gu Li Chiu, the northern Goshawk tribe. This battle was salient to the second prince and the leader. How could they lose? However, the current situation did not look optimistic. New Bai Ha yelled, hurry and retreat. Retreat to our encampment. The Yakshas by his side were furious. New Bai Ha's gaze resembled that of a night owl, fierce, malicious, and sly. You're unable to see it. Looks like we're about to lose. You won't be able to kill him on the battlefield. We will stay outside of Yushu Pass. A pause. Within the pass, as long as he leaves their army encampment, we'll have a chance. The Qiang people are retreating. We've won. 1. Advance. They're trying to get away. Li Chen's breathing was rough and jagged. He leaned against a large boulder. Littered around him were the corpses of three Western Al Yakshas and tens of Qiang soldiers. Supported by his men, Chu Qing made his way toward Li Chen. Your Highness, shall we follow Chase? Li Chen shook his head. This was a Pyrrhic victory. Chu Qing turned to the battlefield, watching as Qiang soldiers fled. However, their own side lost men in the hundreds. Li Chen rose to his feet. He staggered. He wiped away the blood at the corner of his lips. He lifted his head, gaze directed at the sky. He looked at the moon, neither happy nor sad. The moon was still bright, just like before. Li Chen had not been injured after killing his first Yaksha. But he had expended 60% of his energy. When he had fought against the second Yaksha, he was running on his last bit of fuel, exerting himself to the fullest. Thankfully, Fang Gur had taken the third Yaksha and did not let Li Chen fall under any more danger. At the end, after Fang Gur and Chu Qing killed the third Yaksha, Li Chen was already soaked in blood from head to toe and unable to stand. When the masters fought, the regular soldiers could not find a gap to slip in to assist them. However, they could keep the approaching Qiang soldiers from advancing further. They did not let them approach the prince even one step further. The ground was littered with the corpses of the Qiang soldiers and the surrounding Han soldiers also lost tens of men. Within the leading general's barrack, at Yushu Pass, the final messenger rushed in. Report his Highness has won the battle. Out of the 800 Qiang soldiers, only 300 were able to retreat. His Highness and his personal guards slayed three of the Western Al Yakshas and 74 Qiang soldiers. His Highness has ordered for the cleanup of the battlefield. Those in the barrack instantly felt relieved. Zhao Weidu asked, How is His Highness? The messenger said, His Highness has suffered injuries. The army doctors have already been prepared. I'll go take a look, said Zhao Weidu. At the back, Sita lowered his head. Finally, his face revealed a trace of a smile. 
Qi Yunruo sat in the small and narrow quarters belonging to him and Li Chen. It was far away from the entrance to the pass. He seemed to have heard the cries of the battlefield shaking the heavens. From here, he could see from afar the leading general's barrack. It was brightly lit. He didn't know how long he had sat there. Dawn was already arriving when from the outside, someone yelled, His Highness has returned. There also seemed to be the voices of civilians coming from the distance, their voices carrying joy and gratitude. His Highness has won the battle. His Highness has driven the Qiang soldiers away. His Highness His Highness has won. Qi Yunruo's heart pounded in his chest. He rose to his feet. Pushed open the door, excitement coursing through his veins. There were crowds of people outside their encampment. The soldiers who had won the battle marched in the middle of the street. Qi Yunruo stood within the crowd, and looking through a gap, he could not see Li Chen. Two young men followed the crowd of civilians who were there to thank the soldiers. When they caught sight of Qi Yunruo, they shared a look. There were precisely Yuan Fi Yu and Cha He. In a low voice, Cha He said, who would have known that Nu Bai Ha and the twelve Western Owl Yakshas would lose as well. Yuan Fi Yu said, in the coming days, His Highness will have news for us. We just need to wait for it patiently. He looked once more at Qi Yunruo with a deep gaze, before pulling Cha He away. After returning to his quarters, Qi Yunruo paced back and forth, left and right. All of a sudden, someone tugged at his sleeve. He turned to see who it was and found that it was Qi Yunying. Qi Yunying pulled him back outside. His Highness wants you to come to the army clinic. Qi Yunruo asked, What happened? Is His Highness injured? Is it serious? Qi Yunying did not speak for a moment. Then he said, I'm not sure. At this time, the number of people who died or got injured yesterday had already been recorded. Shang Guanling led 1,000 men to battle, and had 376 deaths, 80 heavily injured and 197 lightly injured. Su Yuan had yet to enter the battlefield with his men. Li Chen had 130 deaths, 45 heavily injured, and 153 lightly injured. In total, they killed 492 Qiang soldiers. Ever since the Qiang people had started battle with them, no matter how many Han soldiers they had faced, never did they receive such a huge blow. Zhao Weidu finished writing the report without any superfluous additions. He stayed true to the facts in it, praising Li Chen, who was currently lying on a wooden bed in the army clinic. Exhaustion apparent on his face, Li Chen said, We are always on the defense. Where the enemy is, when the enemy strikes, how many men they have. We don't know any of this. There will be many more battles from now on. To those words, Zhao Weida could only nod. Shortly after, Qi Yunying and Qi Yunruo arrived. Qi Yunruo's eyes widened. He rushed to the bed and knelt before it. The urge to open up Li Chen's robes and see where the injuries lay was hard to ignore. Li Chen reached to hold his hands gently, stopping them from moving further. He said appeasingly, I'm fine. I'm just a bit tired. These are just flesh wounds. Nothing to worry about. Qi Yunruo's gaze illustrated his deep sadness, sorrow filling his heart. Zhao Weidu left the room in an understanding manner. Qi Yunying paused, before leaving as well without a word. Qi Yunruo knelt on the floor head resting on the side of the bed. Li Chen's body armor had protected his chest, so the majority of his injuries were on his arms. Still, he had exerted much energy in killing two members of the Western Owl Yakshas. The rumor that these Yakshas could lift a heavy cauldron was just that, a rumor. However, it was true that they were strong. Right now, Li Chen felt very weak, unable to move too easily. A dull pain flared in his chest region, more specifically his heart and lungs. He found it hard to breathe. After the medicine had been prepared, Qi Yunruo brought it over to feed Li Chen. Once Li Chen had drunk it, he looked at Qi Yunruo's face. He gently said, Little Qi, don't be afraid. I'm really fine. 
I'll take a short nap, so come lie down with me. Shadows rimmed Chi Yunruo's eyes. He removed his outer robes. He was careful not to disturb Li Chen's injuries as he lay down next to him. Li Chen took in his familiar scent and quickly surrendered to slumber. Yet Chi Yunruo could not fall asleep. He rolled over to look at Li Chen. That Li Chen won the battle against the Qiang army caused an uproar in Yushu Pass. The previously low morale population finally felt some confidence toward the newly arrived prince and leading general. They also felt overwhelmed with gratitude toward the emperor and court who had sent them. Through their own volition, the people brought out their own grain and fruits as gifts to the army. Some of the women helped cook their meals. Some went to the army clinic to help take care of the patients. However, in order to avoid spies from sneaking in, the only people who could enter the army encampment were the family members of the military officials. Come noon, Chi Yunruo roused. Li Chen was still in the land of dreams. Chi Yunruo carefully got out of bed and put on his clothes. Then he went to prepare Li Chen's medicine. There were many guards stationed outside Li Chen's quarters. Before he arrived at the pharmacy, he caught sight of the most skilled doctor in the army clinic, Dr. Li. Dr. Li said, His Highness needs to recuperate for at least ten days. During those ten days, he should not exert himself. A sigh escaped his lips. His Highness was struck in his chest. Thankfully, the force of the strike did not break bone. We don't have good tonics here. He can only slowly heal. Chi Yunruo's eyes flashed. The Chu family does. That's true. Chu Qing had suffered heavy injuries this time. The Chu family had worked very hard to climb the tall tree that was Prince Chun, so how could they not take care of Li Chen well? The Chu family's patriarch was Chu Qing's paternal grandfather. He sent his second eldest legitimate son with a box of precious medicine, filled with ginseng and pylos antler. Originally, the northwest region was lacking medicine, and thus medicine prices here were exorbitant. Yet the Chu family was very generous, and opened up their family-owned clinic to the army for free. At night, Li Chen finally roused. He did not feel weak at the slightest. But Qi Yunruo did not allow him to move around freely. Even when Li Chen needed to relieve himself, he would be there to support him as he walked. Li Chen helplessly decided that as long as he was okay, he would stay in bed. Distressed, Qi Yunruo said, Tell me why when we left, your honored self would forget to pack ginseng and edible bird's nest. Li Chen smiled. Don't we have some right now? Yet Qi Yunruo was stubborn. But the ones at the prince estate are definitely better than the Chu families. Yes. Li Chen looked at him. Were you scared last night? Qi Yunruo nodded. Yes. But not to a great extent. I believed your honored self would win. I was just afraid your honored self would be injured. Qi Yunruo knew that as long as they were in Yushu Pass, the prince would face danger like he had last night. With much optimism, he said, Your Highness, do your best to recover. Perhaps when your honored self is fully recovered, leading General Zhao would have driven away the Qiang people. Li Chen burst out laughing. He did not speak again. As long as they had not taken down their enemy's main force bit by bit, the danger at Yushu Pass would not disappear. How could they do this? How could they exterminate all of the Qiang soldiers? Early the next day, Qi Yunruo heard some soft voices outside the room. He rose from bed and went to check. As he got closer to the door, he could discern that the voice belonged to a woman, and that she had come to send medicinal kanji to the prince. The guards obstructed her entry. They hesitated in going inside to wake up Li Chen. Without making a sound, Qi Yunruo made to open the door. He wanted to tell someone to bring the bowl of kanji over. But once he had opened the door to just a crack, and saw the woman across from him, his heart instantly trembled. Eyes wide, he could not believe what he was seeing. Tremors riddled his body as he stared at the woman. After a while, he still could not utter a word. The bowl in the woman's hands fell to the ground and shattered to pieces, 
tears flowing down her face like pearls. End chapter